Today is Tuesday, October the 22nd, and I'm pretty excited to share with you um, the charts because what we said was going to happen or could possibly happen with the S&P yesterday happened perfectly today. And it's really a testimony to the fact that the Ichimoku system works and particularly paying attention to the Chiku span. Amazing as it might sound, what happened 26 days ago has bearing on what's going to happen today. And I'll show you the example. So here was the uh, ES futures, and we had an imbalance where we had negative um, advancers and decliners in the NASDAQ, but positive advancers in the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, there's a few good earnings coming in at 4 o'clock today, so um, I tweeted some of those out. I also tweeted out a Business Insider uh, link to so you can keep track of what earnings are coming. Tomorrow morning is Caterpillar. Tonight is a Whirlpool and um, a couple of others. But anyhow, look at what we did. We went and we came in and made the Globex high about 10.30 in the morning came back to it again after pulling back to the 50% line, came back to it again, then we came back and tested the 50% line, came back to the Globex low, and we fell and closed or bounced off of yesterday's prior low. Now, why is that interesting? And look at that, I can't, there we go. And why is that interesting? Um, let's go to right away to the S&P chart. It's because yesterday we noticed that the Chiku span stopped exactly underneath the September 13th candle, 26, day, 26 trading days behind. And we said that today, um, if we opened uh, up or slightly down, there was a good chance that somehow in the day we were going to come back and test with the Chiku span on the top of this candle and see if we got support. And that's exactly what we got, which really indicates that tomorrow should be an up day because we had resistance here, we had support here. So there's two levels that were tested out by the high volume traders. Uh, so tomorrow should be an up day. Now let's see if that's confirmed with our momentum indicator. So let's go back. Um, Finbiz shows that advancers and decliners were pretty much flat. Advancers slightly leading decliners um, overall on the about 8,000 stocks that Finviz looks at, which is going to take our market breadth indicator nowhere. So it's still above the neutral line and it's still going in the direction of overbought. So money uh, is, is churning, has been stalled, but it's still not coming out of the market it shows that the trend is still money going into the market. So let's look at a few more charts. Apple down 81 cents. Nothing really to worry about. Earnings are next week. Um, Caterpillar, earnings are tomorrow morning. And look at that big pop over that resistance line. Now I went and I don't see how Caterpillar is going to knock anybody's socks off tomorrow in earnings unless they've done a hell of a job of controlling expenses because I can't imagine that their sales are that good with the problems that we've got with global trade and with lack of infrastructure spending in the United States and construction spending down, home spending down. Um, we were able to break through this trend line, which is a, a January of 2018 established trend line. We finished just a little above it. We um, need to have a couple of days where we remain above that trend line. And then we'll go up and we'll challenge this, uh, this gap. But since tomorrow is earnings, trend lines don't matter. Gaps don't matter. Moving averages matter. And if we drop tomorrow, we're going to come back to the 8 EMA and the 200 SMA, which are in exactly the same spot. And let's... Uh, Put our alert right there. So let's create an alert in Motive Wave where price um, touches the 8 EMA and we're going to get a trigger there. 
Let's look at the chiku span. What does that tell us? The chiku span finished above this candle. Really, really important. That means that there's a if if earnings are good, this goes higher. There's no technical reason why Caterpillar should go down, but technicals go out the window when there's earnings. GDX pretty much flat down um, four cents. Anything interesting here? Yeah, the Chiku span um, could not break through here. Yesterday it stopped at the bottom of this candle and today didn't even have the strength to go up and test here. But So the stock is in trouble. It's um, underneath the 8 EMA and the Chiku span is going to float around underneath these candles in the cloud. So there's a good um, chance now that what we see in GDX is a continued sideways motion and we're going to look for an opportunity to break through thin resistance right in here somewhere. AT&T down five cents looked like it was going to have a good day it looks like it was going to have a bad day actually it started off quite negatively and finished off quite strong. Uh, Whirlpool Earnings are going to pop up onto the screen at any time now. Um, so forget the charts. Let's wait until we see what the earnings are. Amazon down 22. So everything we've said about the resistance of all these moving averages in the cloud is coming into play. We are going up, but again, earnings uh, are going to be very important. And until then, uh, expect sideways motion, a lot of resistance before the cloud gets thin and resistance lightens up. Google down $3 looking for support on the 8 EMA. We're still, the Chico span is still above these candles. So again, um, their earnings are coming up this week. I think Thursday, I'm not sure. Uh, this certainly is a very important day. Today there were over 400 earnings releases. Tomorrow I think there's something like 270 of them. So this is a chock-a-block week for earnings. Uh, the S&P, just to reiterate, I think this is quite bullish, and I think that we move higher tomorrow. How much higher? It's going to depend on how good uh, earnings are tonight and tomorrow morning.